Denver Broncos rookie wide receiver Devon Vela is looking like a potential big-time NFL draft steal after making the catch of training camp so far. We'll give you more on that, plus a Colts preseason preview here on today's brand-new episode, Lockdown Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Broncos country? Welcome into yet another episode. Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Cody Rourke, credential Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. I cover the team in person daily in Dove Valley. Join alongside, as always, by the longtime site expert and voice of reason for Broncos country, Sarah Bettinger over there, predominantly orange. Dot com And look, really, today's episode of the show, we got a lot to break down. The preseason's right around the corner. We're going to dive deep into what we would like to see from the Broncos' defense and offense, specifically against the Indianapolis Colts, as they potentially face and get a little bit of action against Joe Flacco, who was a playoff quarterback last year for the Cleveland Browns. But we're also going to talk about a rookie wide receiver, Devon Vele, has suddenly risen quickly throughout the start of training camp on the heels of preseason being right around the corner of this Sunday. We'll talk about his impact and why we believe he will make the 53-man roster. You're going to get all that here on today's episode of the show that is brought to you by our friends over there at LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Terms and conditions apply. Speaking of terms and conditions, Sarah, the Broncos wide receiver room has a lot of competition, and there are a lot of opportunities for some of these young guys to make plays Practice is important. The games are obviously going to hold a little bit more weight than anything else, but it is hard to ignore what Devon Vele, the seventh-round rookie draft pick out of Utah, has brought to the table here at training camp. For those who have been in attendance and those of us who have been watching practice, he has suddenly risen very quickly from you know a guy who was like, all right, hey, what's the role for this guy going to be considering the wide receiver depth? To all of a sudden, now we're saying, hey, this guy is very much in line for the 53-man roster, and we think he's going to make it. Yeah, I, I remember seeing you tweet out a couple of days ago, Cody, that Devon Vele is the real deal. He's legit. And certainly I saw you and a number of other media members at Broncos training camp practice tweeting out after he made this catch. And I was just sitting there thinking, man, I hope somebody posts the video. Sure enough, Mile High Ronin at, uh, on Twitter or X, whatever you're calling it these days, posted the footage of this catch from Devon Vele that was as great as everybody said. I mean, a one-handed catch, had to contort his body Body to go the other direction was really a back shoulder type of throw that he was able to identify in the air and kind of reach back. I mean, we used to call it, you know, Odell it, you know, when we were playing pickup football outside. So he was Odell in it out there in the way that he caught this ball. But it's, it's just funny how things kind of come together, right? When Sean Payton is complimenting and talking about, man, this guy's got such a catch radius and, and we love his ability to catch the ball in traffic and things like that. What a perfect example of that and then some when you're talking about making a catch with your every inch of your catch radius out there. And when you're talking about making a case for the 53 man roster, like this is how you do it, right? You stack days and then you have plays that the coaching staff is going to go back and look at and they're going to say, man, like, how are we supposed to get rid of this guy? How are we supposed to try to get this guy through waivers? we got to find a role for him as opposed to maybe trying to finesse the system. And I think that's where Devon Vele is at, even entering the preseason. So he's coming into this game against the Colts with a huge advantage, I think, over a lot of the other bottom-end roster players at wide receiver. No, it's a great point. And, and certainly, I'd say there's a lot of stock and a lot of things that we visually have seen at practice to say, hey, like, there is real momentum for what you're saying here. And Sarah, look, I'll bring it a step further here. This week specifically, I've seen Devon Vele get more reps, more rotations specifically with the Broncos' first-team offense, whoever the quarterback has been, which has been a nice sight to see. He's still getting reps with the second team and the third team, but the fact that he's getting a little bit more increased amplification with the first-team guys is great. Whether that's Jarrett Stidham throwing him the ball or Bo Nix during Thursday's practice, it was Jarrett Stidham who threw – that one play, I know everyone's dissecting, hey, that would have been a sack or could have been. It doesn't matter. We're ignoring, like, 
the, the catch was incredible. You know, you talk about OBJ or Odell Beckham Jr.'s catch. We're going to start calling it the Ovele as we keep going forth here if he continues to stack it. Not only will I say this, that, that Broncos fans should be keeping an eye out for number 81 during the preseason game this Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts. That will be an 11 a.m. Mountain Time kickoff for those of you here in, obviously, Denver, Colorado. But the one thing I would also say is, when you're not watching him on offense, watch him on special teams. I'm talking about watch him as a gunner, watch him as a jammer, and then maybe even watch him on some of the kick coverage concepts that you'll more than likely will see. He's excelling a little bit. And look, this isn't anything. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. But if we're talking about who's maybe going to be relied upon a little bit more for on this roster this year from the rookie wide receivers, I, I would say that maybe Devon Vele might be an accelerated case. Now, is that because he's 27 years old? Maybe like he, he's got a lot of football experience. He's a little bit older, but my thing is here, Sarah, I also think that Devon Vele is in the perfect position as a complete sleeper. I'm not saying he's the next Puka Nakua, but I'm saying he could very well be the guy this year that people are like, where the heck did this guy come from? And those of you who watch lockdown Broncos or, you know, follow Denver media, you've been paying attention. Like what we've been talking about during camp, you, I think will very much, see that during the preseason and look things have to come to fruition but very excited about him and, and sarah what's crazy is like you know, we can always revisit this right i saw people retweeting the uh, the announcement the draft announcement of vele from the broncos twitter handle and you go back and you read the comments some very very interesting comments i think some people are maybe looking at it now that have been at practice like you know what completely slept on this guy i think that vele was a victim so to speak of really bad quarterback play at utah and I think now he's getting an opportunity and a better system to really showcase what he can do. He really is. And he's taking advantage of an opportunity. And we do have to go revisit some of those ice cold takes at the NFL draft. I know that we're not even to the preseason just yet, but I think it's pretty clear that the guy has already outperformed. I think what a lot of people expected that he was going to be capable of doing coming out of Utah. And so you've seen him really go out there and, and do what late round draft picks need to do to make a 53 man roster. You make the splash plays, you stack days, you start getting it into the good graces of the coaching staff and the head coach is now seeing you out there, seeing you repeatedly do things right. I think he's doing a great job. And certainly as we get to the preseason, that's going to be one of those guys that you earmark and you kind of watch and circle. Okay. Where is 81? Like you said, whether it's kick coverage, whether it's, I don't know if he's going to get reps in the return game. I don't know how, what the Broncos are planning on there, but we'll kind of wait and see what his role is. But I think offensively, He's going to get a ton of reps in the preseason. And I've seen, Cody, this is something that I've seen brought up. Does Devon Vele make somebody like Tim Patrick or Cortland Sutton expendable? I don't like the idea just because I feel like, hey, let's let's have some depth at receiver for once, as opposed to just saying, oh, the guy's doing well in training camp. Let's let's trade this guy or get rid of this guy. I mean, maybe if you have seven, eight guys that you feel like, hey, they can contribute to this roster, then you trade somebody like we saw the Broncos do a couple years ago with Trinity Benson. But just because Devon is having a good training camp, I don't think that means you phase out Cortland Sutton or Tim Patrick from the offense this year. No, great points. And, and look, I agree with you. I, I saw your reaction to that initially. And I was like, yeah, like Sarah's been banging the table for like good wide receiver depth for years. And look, it's it's great that Vele is elevating here in practice. You want to see it carry over in games, right? But think about it from this standpoint too. You know, let's say you were to get rid of a guy like a Tim Patrick, like if Devon Vele makes Tim expendable in the way that some people think, then, you know, there's an injury there. Then all of a sudden now you're hurting at wide receiver again. Like I, I'm very much on board with you. I think having good depth is better than just like, hey, let's put all our eggs in the basket of this young guy. He looks good right now in practice. We want to see it in games. We know what, you know, some potential things that he can do, but you don't get rid of other guys. You don't rob Paul to pay Peter in that instance. I'm in agreement with you there. And look, preseason is happening here in, uh, you know, just a few days time, Sunday to be exact, 11 a.m. Mountain time kickoff. And look, the Broncos offense, they have a lot of new faces and a lot of new things that are kind of impacting them. And there are a few things that we need to see in order to gain confidence in that unit going forward. We'll tell you the key things that we're watching for a quarterback, wide receiver, and running back here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at LinkedIn Jobs. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs, they have the tools that will help you find the right professionals for your team faster 
and for free. The best part about it, LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but they might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. And LinkedIn knows that small businesses, they're wearing so many hats and they may not have the time nor the resources to hire. But LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process even easier, including they just launched a feature that just helps you write job descriptions, which makes the process faster and quicker. And over 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. What do we want to see from the Denver Broncos offense against the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday? Well, we want to see points scored. We want to see the quarterbacks extending some drives. And we've got more that we want to talk about here about this offense coming up against the Indianapolis Colts as we kind of continue evaluating this 90-man roster top to bottom. And there's going to be storylines no matter who is out there on the field. So Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in every single day to Locked On Broncos. We appreciate you so much for subscribing wherever you get your podcast or going over to YouTube, watching the show and hitting subscribe over there as well. And if you're like me, you need help assembling your fantasy football roster. I would not consider myself a professional football fantasy football player, Cody, by any means. So I need the Locked On Fantasy Football crew to help me out with that. So go ahead, check out Locked On Fantasy Football as you get ready for your fantasy football drafts, as well as getting into the season. You need help picking up waiver wire guys and things like that. So check them out. But Cody, let's talk about what we want to see from the offense. I think I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this because you've been at training camp every day, right? And you've seen kind of the the whole of the offense as they install, as they go through different scenarios as in terms of red zone stuff, goal to go stuff, third down stuff. You've seen that process all play out. What is it based on what you've seen that you want to now see against the Colts in this first preseason game of 2024? Yeah, I feel like we can break this up in a couple of ways, right? Like, what do we want to see from the starters? And what do we want to see from the guys who aren't starters? And and we don't know who the starters are just yet for the Broncos. We, you know, for the most part, the offense, we know. We don't know quarterback. We don't know maybe the center position. We don't know who's going to get that start there. But, you know, I, I think one thing we want to see and that I think is going to be crucial here is can they get off to a fast start? You know, and I just want to see them operate. Like Sean Payton said that the Starters are going to get 15 to 18 snaps in this game, in the game against the Green Bay Packers, maybe in that final game against the Arizona Cardinals. But you just want to see efficiency. And I would say for the most part, I, I want to see the offense be balanced. You know, I felt like last year in the preseason, we saw some moments where like, all right, like Sean wasn't happy with how that drive went. So he's given the players, you know, another series because he's like, you, we can't end like that. Like we can't go into the preseason. I think it was against the Arizona Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken. Things didn't go well. And it's like, all right, hey, you guys are coming out to you score a touchdown. And luckily, I think it was Jerry Judy who scored the touchdown, if I'm not mistaken, last year. But, you know, how far we have come from that moment. I would just say this, Sarah. Overall, from the starters, I would just like to see them come out, start fast, not have, you know, penalties, pre-snap penalties. That was something that happened in the preseason last year. Like, ah, you can't have that. To me, that's like a little, little critique. Just go out there and play. That That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. What are you looking forward to seeing potentially here from the offense? And then we'll dive into maybe like the backups, what we'd like to see based on stuff that we've seen so far throughout training camp. Yeah, I kind of went positionally here. I think from the quarterbacks, I want to see extended drives, good decisions with the football and spreading the ball around. I think that's really important as we get into the preseason. Of course, a major part of the preseason is player evaluation. So you want these quarterbacks to do their part to help you out with that. They've got to make accurate on-time throws. Can't be taking a bunch of sacks. Can't be getting a bunch of three and outs out there. These quarterbacks, especially because this has been pitched as a three-way competition from the beginning of the offseason. I know right now it doesn't kind of feel like three-way, maybe just Bo Nix and Jarrett Stidham at this point. But regardless, you've got a former second overall pick out there in Zach Wilson, probably late in this game. I want to see all three of those quarterbacks operate some extended drives, Cody, and really spread the ball around, make good decisions, no three and outs or limit the three and outs as much as you possibly can. 
and it, and it, obviously it starts with the quarterback position, right? When we're talking about what do we want to see from the offense, everything filters down from those guys. I, I want to see the running backs too, Cody, go out there and, and make it tough on this team to cut somebody or to trade somebody. I want to make, I want them to go out there and say, Hey, we're not just going to be riding the hot hand all year. Like we have to get these guys actively involved in our game plan every single week. We have to scheme touches for three or four guys. I want to see all of these running backs out there running hard, running physical, being decisive and, and really helping those quarterbacks extend those drives. And, and there's so much too, like you mentioned, the running backs, we, we've heard Sean Payton say, Hey, in order to help the quarterback play, you got to have to have a strong run game. You have to have, you know, good defensive play there. It, it's all encompassing too. And I also think the wide receivers, you know, go out there and make plays. I'm very curious to see if Denver's approach, what we have seen so far in training camp, really their offense, they have taken some shots from time to time, but I would like to see them, you know, be methodical in the way that they do it. You know, Sarah, it'd be great if the Broncos starters, let's say they got their first drive, you know, uh, of the entire preseason. And let's say it's a 13, 14 play drive and it ends in a touchdown. That, like in a perfect world, that's what we want to see here uh, to kind of piggyback off of you. Just want to see the quarterbacks not play timid in a sense, right? Like I, I don't think that this uh, fans want to see them come out and play a dink and dunk passing approach. Like, you're going to have to do that, right? Methodically march down the field, balance it, gash him a little bit in the run game. But don't be afraid to take a shot. Like, do it. Like, what do you have to hide? That's part of the game. I want to see them be aggressive and not necessarily play timid. I will say this. The only critique I think I've commonly had a little bit of Jarrett Stidham, I think he's done a really good job of balancing this. Like, there's times where it's like a third and seven. You know, sometimes you see him throw it four yards and then hope that the receiver gets those extra three yards. I want to see him kind of balance that. But then there's times we've seen him in a move the ball period. It's fourth and 18, and he throws a 23-yard strike. So maybe I'm nitpicking here, but I, I want to see that from him. From Bo Nix, I just want to continue to see, hey, get the football out of your hands. You know, live to see another day. Don't try to play hero. Like, this is going to be his first NFL game, first football game he's actually played since they had the bowl game, obviously, several months ago. So I want to see how he adjusts a little bit to the NFL speed. I I'm going to go here to the backups now. My concern going into this game on Sunday is definitely with the Broncos' backup offensive line a little bit. There have been times consistently throughout training camp where they have allowed a lot of pressure. They have allowed the pocket to collapse around the quarterback. They've allowed guys to come free off the outside. Like You have to have that communication down pat because Denver at this point, that second and third team offensive unit, they need quality backups behind the starters in case there is an injury or something happens. Like You have to be in a secure place for that. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing from the backup guys as we talk about this. Um, you know, anything else you're looking for here for the offense? I feel like the number one thing we want to see, okay, third down, like be better on third down. Like have, if Denver's converting 48 to, you know, in the 54% range on their third downs, I think it's a step in the right direction. What we don't want to see is anything under 37, 38%. We want to see a little bit above 38, 39% there. Perfect world would be 40 something, you know, but uh, I'm not going to be too picky here. Well, that means that the playmakers have to make plays, right? Especially the guys that are competing for roster spots. You want those back end wide receivers and tight ends to make plays. I know we haven't spoken much about it recently. I don't know how much we're going to see Greg Dulcich want to see those playmakers at both wide receiver and tight end, though out there making plays. I don't know if Greg's going to be out there for a series or two, or if he's going to be out there at all. I would love to see Greg Dulcich out there make a play or two. I want to see Lucas Kroll make a play or two. I want to see Troy Franklin, Devon Vele, Jalen Virgil, all, Lil Jordan Humphrey, all these guys make it really tough for the Broncos. Just like I said about running back, make it really tough for Sean Payton and George Payton and David Shaw and all these other guys uh, and, and make it tough for them to make a cut or make it so that they have to find a way to trade you to somebody to get some value in return. You want to see your depth, like you said, with the offensive line, just all over the place. You want everybody to feel good. If if nothing else, the Broncos, they're not known for having this elite level roster on paper right now. There's a lot of question marks. Let's utilize the preseason to maybe erase some of those question marks, right? To, to answer some questions that people are having, like, can this guy do this? Can this guy stay healthy? Can Tim Patrick still do this? Can Greg Dulcich still do, do this? You know, is Devon Bailey going to be able to play in the regular season? Let's get these question marks answered a little bit here with some preseason reps that I think are going to be way more valuable than anybody really realizes right now.
When I think coming out of Sunday, we'll obviously have a post-game report here, Lockdown Broncos reacting to the game, but I think we'll get a clear picture. We can maybe evaluate players a little bit easier than we can in practice because, you know, practice, you can only simulate so much of game scenarios inside of practice. The game is the real tell and call. You get a lineup against a new offense and defensive formation, and it's just going out there and reacting and adjusting too. So I'm excited to see how the Broncos do approach this. Uh, you know, one thing we are excited about, hey, look, the Broncos defense, they will have a chance to be on the field here this Sunday against the Colts, and they might have a chance to tee off against their former quarterback, Joe Flacco. We'll tell you what we're looking forward to seeing from the Broncos' defensive side of the ball in Sunday's preseason game here on today's episode of the show. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And look, Broncos country, there is a football game this week, preseason to be exact. If you're a Broncos fan and you're in Indianapolis, make sure you catch tickets to the game courtesy of our friends over there at the Game Time app because the Game Time app is an authorized ticket marketplace of the National Football League, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down the closer it gets to kickoff with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time, they take the guesswork out of buying tickets to the NFL or your favorite events that are going on in your area, whether that's concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Game time has everything that you could be looking for, including last-minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. Their last-minute deals are a great offer where you can save up to 60% off of buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Plus, their lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So check out the game here this week when the Broncos take on the Colts in Indianapolis. Take the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As we jump in the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos diving a little bit deeper into our preview against the Indianapolis Colts week one of the NFL preseason. We'll focus on what we'd like to see from the Broncos defense against the Colts offense through four quarters of play and obviously a rotation of different units. There's a lot of stake, but real quick, want to say thanks once again, all the everydayers in Broncos country. Thanks for making us part of your day every single day. If you're as your first listen, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team Every day, Sarah, we just highlighted the offensive side of the ball. Some of the things we'd like to see from units specifically or specific positions shifting gears now to the defensive side of the ball against the Colts. What is something that you would like to see coming into Sunday's game here? Well, we know that Joe Flacco is probably going to play quite a bit in this game, right? Because Anthony Richardson coming back from injury, not sure if we'll see him out there or if he'll be out there for just a little bit. But hey, pass rushers, why don't you tee off on Joe Flacco a little bit? I don't think Joe has very fond memories of his time in Denver, and certainly Broncos fans don't have fond memories of Joe Flacco being in Denver. Now, you don't want the guy to get hurt a little bit, but look, this is football. You want to hit him. Let's go out there and tee off as pass rushers against Joe Flacco and make this really tough for the Colts to get a good, clean evaluation because the number one thing that I love watching in the preseason defensively is pass rushers teeing off. You mentioned the concerns with the backup offensive line on, on our side of the ball, Cody. I think that's pretty generally true for almost every NFL team and pass rushers in the preseason can take advantage of that by putting big time reps on tape. We've seen guys, I you want to go back to Lorente McCray, Shaquille Barrett, other preseason warriors off the edge for the Denver Broncos through the years, a number of guys making the team based on what they did in preseason ball. I want to see these pass rushers really tee off, especially against a quarterback that's not the most fleet of foot, right? Joe Flacco is not going to be out there uh, doing the Anthony Richardson things. So go ahead and go out there, tee off on this guy, and and force him to get rid of the ball quickly. Well, you know, the thing with Joe, too, is, you know, got to give him props. He led an impressive run when he took over as the Browns' starting quarterback. Obviously, there are things kind of sputtered out in the pre uh, not in the preseason, in the postseason, um, against the Houston Texans. And and look, I think for Flacco, this is also a good test. Depends on what unit he's playing with, right? Let's say Anthony Richardson gets to play. Okay, you get a little bit of an early preview. You're not going to see what you're going to see in the regular season, but Denver plays the Colts in the regular season, which is I think makes this preseason matchup a little bit more interesting. But, you know, for a guy like Joe Flacco, kind of reminds me a little bit last year when the Broncos played the 49ers in the preseason. And, you know, at the end, you have your third-string guys going against Sam freaking Darnold 
who all of a sudden starts going on a little bit of a tear against that unit, gains confidence. And so I think for these young guys, they look at Joe Flacco. He's a former Super Bowl winning quarterback. You know, there was a debates by Congress at one point in time whether or not he was elite. Um, and so now you have young guys who are like, hey, these young kids were probably in middle school when Joe Flacco was still playing, like, you know, for the Ravens and had them in the postseason. So it will be a cool experience thing for some of the young guys if that is the case. But I agree with you. You have to get pressure. I want to see that because pressure has been a good sign so far early on in Broncos camp you know, from the Denver defensive line, the pass rush. Now you mentioned pass rush specifically, you know, Sarah, I'm really looking at, for, you know, forward to seeing Jonathan Cooper, Baron Brown, and can't wait to see those guys there. But I want to see a little bit of Jonah Ellis, right? We're going to see Jonah Ellis, more than likely Jalen Allen, Thomas Incombe. Those three guys, are, I think, are very, very important names to watch as we get a little bit closer to Sunday's game defensively. I've got my eye on there, but you know me. I'm a defensive back guy, so of course I'll be watching the cornerback room. I'll be watching the safety room. We're going to get our first look at uh, obviously Devin Key and JL Skinner. Now the question is, is who's going to get the start between those two guys? To my understanding, I believe it's going to be PJ Locke and JL Skinner getting the start, and then you'll see JL Skinner stay on when the starters come off, and then you'll see Devin Key come onto the field, and those two guys will play the reps at safety before I think it switches up to Tanner McAllister, Kedron Smith. Um, something along those lines, but a corner, very, very curious to see who gets the starting reps there. And look, I'll, I'll even say this as well. Chris Abrams drain started to gain a little more confidence has gotten some reps with first team defense, just in terms of the rotation, just because Levi Wallace has been out with the hamstring injury. So you're seeing Damari Mathis, uh, you're seeing Riley Moss, you're seeing those guys in the mix. And then Chris Abrams drain. How does that look? You know, how, what does the rotation look like there? Reese Taylor getting involved, Art Green, who had a fumble, you know, forced the other day in practice and, you know, is doing a really good job in terms of run fits so far in camp. I'm excited about the secondary. You know, to me, this is where I probably have some questions about like, okay, hey, defensively, what does this look like? Not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is an area that I'm certainly most looking forward to watching here from a defensive standpoint. I don't think anybody's going to overreact either way, Cody, no matter what happens in this game. If the cornerbacks don't look good, nobody's certainly nobody's going to overreact to that in a preseason matchup. And and I get it, too. I'm with you. I think after what we saw last year with Damari Mathis really struggling, despite the fact that we were kind of all bought in the same way George Payton was to say, all right, Damari looked good enough in his rookie year, good enough to be the starter this year. And they put all their eggs in that basket. And then all of a sudden, you got to use Fabian Moreau for the majority of the season because Damari wasn't able to be out there long term. So, yes, the cornerback position is very much going to be in focus. Who is getting picked on out there? Do you even play Pat Sertan in this game, Cody? Do you, I, I don't know that I would. I mean, maybe he will for a couple few snaps, something like that. But I don't think I he'll play. I don't think he needs to, right? No, and it smart. gives you the option to to go see Riley Moss and Damari Mathis at the same time with the number one defense. Like strategically speaking, it makes way more sense to do that. Give Jaquan McMillan a drive or two out there to play in the slot and things like that. And I think rotate in Chris Abrams drain as soon as you can and give the majority of the first half reps to Riley Moss, who we didn't see in last year's preseason at all. Keep in mind, when we see Riley Moss out there, it's going to be the first time you're seeing him play outside corner since he was a member of the Iowa Hawkeyes. He was out for most of training camp last year, didn't play in the preseason, got onto the field last year on special teams, did some dime stuff. So we haven't seen him play consistently on the outside since he was at Iowa. We need to see Damari Mathis bounce back. We need to see Chris Abrams drain out there, Art Green, all these other guys. Reese Taylor, like you mentioned, I want to see these guys take advantage of every single rep and take advantage of what my what I said I wanted to see earlier, the pass rush teeing off. Those defensive backs need to be ready for those pass rushers to rush throws. So I want to see that very much so in the first half of this game, especially because I think there's a lot more at stake with guys like Riley Moss, Damari Mathis, Chris Abrams drain. You, you do want to see Art Green play well. You want to see the younger guys play well, but the guys who are really factoring into the starting mix right now, they're under probably the most pressure besides the quarterbacks out of anybody else in this preseason game. No, I would agree with you there. And look, maybe even keep an eye on this because Sean Payton talked about the vision for uh, Chris Abrams drain being an outside in type of guy. They're going to you know have him at outside, then move him inside. Remember last year in the preseason, we saw 
Jaquan McMillan and a Sang Bassey play inside and outside at corner. You know, when one guy was in it outside corner, the other guy went to the nickel. And then, you know, next half, you started seeing Jaquan in the nickel. And now Jaquan has emerged as one of the more exciting young nickel defenders in the entire NFL. And man, he's had a tremendous training camp. So his spot won't be in question. But when it comes to Reese Taylor, keep an eye on him playing in the nickel and some backup spots. But more than likely, Chris Abrams drain. I'd imagine Art Green, Tremont Smith, those guys will probably play a little bit later on into this game here on Sunday. But regardless, we're excited to see how it all pans out. You know me, I'll be watching that area specifically. But look, Broncos country, we appreciate you so much for rocking with us here, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen today. Make sure you make us your first listen every single day because we have an episode for you on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget for your second listen of the day after the show, go check out the Lockdown Fantasy Football Podcast wherever you get your podcast. For you everydayers out there, here's what you can expect. There is no practice open to the fans on Friday, but media gets to attend the indoor practice at Broncos Park powered by Common Spirit. We'll go through, do a little bit of a recap there. We'll figure out hopefully Who's going to start the game following practice? We'll give an update on that. Plus, we'll also give you our players to watch, our keys to victory as we preview the Indianapolis Colts matchup on Sunday. You can get all that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. We'll see you then.